Hello there. How are you today? We're going to be talking about non-duality today in consciousness, and especially Tom Campbell's theory, Big Toe, Big Theory of Everything. So I've been reading this book for the past couple of weeks, I think, two weeks or so. He's got three books on what he calls a big theory of everything. And well, this is a, a this is a big hit on how we see the world. So if you're ready for that, but if you're committed to growing and looking out for new ideas or you're just you're just looking for for growth and new questions this video is for you um so yeah first of all i'm talking to you curious soul who loves philosophy and i read the big theory of everything because i'm really interested in meditation and basically like what we are what are we and and, and why do we all of a sudden feel a deep and satisfaction or craving or we just tend to get stuck in suffering or things that uh, are external like a person money objects career and well I'm just learning about that but basically what Tom Campbell explains in his theory of everything I'll drop a link here because it's a lot and I'm also reflecting on it is how we are just constrained by several limiting beliefs and paradigms that we have been taught since childhood depending on our culture but mostly if you live in the Western Front can you call it that way if you live in the Western Front you were taught to believe in science and the scientific method and a material reality that is constrained by space and time that is how we see the world, basically, you know? We occupy space, there is change, and there is time. And several scientists, really clever ones like uh, Einstein or Bohr, knew that there was something besides material reality. Why? Because they conducted experiments, especially with quanta. They knew that entangled pairs, seemingly two two pairs of, of, of quanta in different parts of the world would be connected depending on the observation uh, performed on them. So how could this be? How could this happen? They intuited that there was something else and that's why Einstein tried to create a unified, uh, unified field theory where he tried to explain there was something more and space itself was just elongated and that created this sort of... Uh, change even when when two quanta were separated by what seemed to us a long distance and that was seemingly unrelated but no everything seems to be related and tom campbell has conducted these experiments how he he basically tells us that we are ruled by scientism in the sense that we think everything is a material reality we have you know bodies and we think that we are trapped inside bodies and skulls and we observed objects, so we are basically organic meat bags. If you played uh, Knights of the Old Republic, <laughs> you all know that. We are basically organic meat bags that walk around in space and see other organic meat bags and interact as separate objects in a in a some sort of uh, empty space that we were just put there. But is that so? Is that so? I don't know. There are many things that we cannot explain by by the the scientific method, like the hard problem of consciousness. We don't know how uh, matter, you know, atoms and particles, electrons, boson Higgs, arrange themselves in a way that creates consciousness, and we don't know that. So we have theorized many explanations on why that seems to be the case, but we don't know yet. But what if it was the other round? What if everything was consciousness and physical reality was just a simulation of, of something else? We have seen this analogy in many other teachings or, 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 or spiritual, spiritual schools, you could say, where... We are told that we're all one, that we are all part of the same fabric, of the same weaving, and it just seems that we are 
separate because of the illusion of ego. You know, we, we, we grow and we are told that we are different individuals and we get a name and we get labels and we are told to be a certain way because we have to be loved or not loved. And that is creating some sort of illusion that we are this separate entity, uh, somehow separated from everything else. And I think that may be a delusion or just some kind of, of intellectual construct. Why? I still don't know why. Why is that ego created? I don't know. But the thing is, a localized self, what we are experiencing, you being there watching a seeming me, how could, how could we be connected? How could we be part of the same weaving as some people say? Well, there is a theory, right? Our local reality, what we will call uh, PMR or NPMR, that's what Tom Campbell calls it, non-physical matter reality, because you know, we could see reality, but there's so many things that we can't perceive because we are limited by our five senses, okay? So we can't see what a bat would perceive, do we agree? Or everything that a dog would perceive. We have different filters of reality, okay? Therefore, with logic, we could conclude that there is more to reality than what our senses can perceive. And yet, therefore, people would say, well, okay, but that's science, so how, how can we perceive that? Everything will be perceived by that. Well, no, you know, because we have dials, we have we have tools, but they are just extensions, magnifying glasses of our own own senses. And we'll never be able to perceive something else if we are just limited by our senses. Now, the only true set of things that we can see here, perhaps, is you know, I'm I'm perceiving things in this moment right now. Uh, free of, of past and future, all I know is that there are stimuli. There's light, there's pressure, there's, there's sound. I can feel the breath. And everything else is just a concept. Even these words that I'm speaking, I, I don't really know where they're coming from. And what I call my body is just a, a construct of words that I have been taught, hand, right? But if I really let my hand rest, it seems to disappear as if there was no border between the air or the world and what I call the hand. So what if this, you know, this, oh, this, I love this, this analogy. So we have a hand, right? And then we do this and we have a fist. And if I tell you, where did the fist go? Well, it's just a, it's just the same thing, a manifestation of the hand. It's a, it's a it's a state uh, of the change of the hand, and that's what we are as human beings. We are a form of con of a state in which reality or universal consciousness manifests itself. Why? In order to improve itself, that's what Tom claims, and it it kind of makes sense in a way. You know, it's you can you could call this different things experiencing itself growing itself, evolving itself, but in a way we do know that it's there's an underlying force that organizes things without too much effort. You know, I don't grow my hair. I love the Alan Watts quote. I don't grow my nails. I don't renew the cells in my body. I don't make my heart beat, and yet it's happening. So we could get caught in this intellectual trap of thinking that we have to be doing something with the mind with the thought side of consciousness and that is just a delusion it's just a really powerful uh state of consciousness but it's not everything so when we know that we know that okay there's more to reality we can't perceive it we have a force that is organizing things in a certain pattern. The universe is not just us, but we are driven toward growth and evolution and something just permeating everything that is. And what could that be? Perhaps it's, it's consciousness itself and it's permeating everything. And what if our reality is just one of multiple realities and 
That's why we call it NPMR. Oh my God, I feel like I'm just rambling along, trying to digest everything that I've learned between Tom Campbell and Rupert Spire, but it's, it's good, it's good. I hope this is like interesting to you at least, otherwise I'm just, you know, just rambling here. So that would mean that we are in some sort of, of dream created by consciousness where there are certain rules, that is space and time, in order to iterate and experience, the universe experiences itself through the filter of many localized selves, which is you and I in this case. And it's creating that in order to, to discover itself, to, to find out. And it doesn't know what it is or what it could be or how it could grow if it doesn't test and iterate through, in this case, consciousness and, and localized consciousness. There are multiple things, multiple, multiple versions of consciousness, which I love. You know, the, We know that animals are conscious, but they have a, a different kind of consciousness that, than we do. Now, what I love here is thinking about in a in a humble way and shifting our paradigm that we are we we tend to anthropomorphize oh my god that word I always we tend to anthropomorphize everything and think that everything is made in a human form just like we did with gods and aliens you know fuck you my knowledge with me so what if Consciousness is just different. It's not what we perceive or how we see it. it. It's way different, but it's out there. And we're just a single part, a a cog in a big, really big, infinite or seemingly infinite to us, unbounded oneness. That's what he calls it, Tom Campbell. Uh, I believe he calls it unlimited... No, absolute unbounded oneness. A, a fabric so big that it would be as if we were just a small quanta or boson Higgs in a much bigger cosmos. And that is impressive if you think about it because we are, we are caught in a trap of scientism that just traps our beliefs and we, we, are, we limit ourselves because we know that's true. How many times have we put a ceiling on our own skills, not just athletic-wise, meaning the body and the material side of it, but thinking-wise, you know, thinking the earth was flat or witch hunts or, you know, many things. So that leads me to thinking that we are in a stage of growth, of impressive uh, learning, especially with AI, which could basically become a, a other type of consciousness related to us, a cousin consciousness, you could say. So we are, we are in this story of evolution, which is just a, a microcosm of the universe. We are a part of the universe, so we are made in its image. And we tend to see this as fractals. And those fractals are repeating themselves throughout the world, you know, kind of like if you see a snowflake and then many of these build up into snow. Or we could see uh, crystals and how those patterns just repeat themselves. Really simple patterns, deep, simple patterns repeat themselves, but arrange themselves in a way to create something seemingly mysterious and more complex and therefore lower the entropy of their own arrangement. So that's what that's what's happening to us through our evolution, through our interaction with ourselves and our discovery and our work, we are lowering the entropy of our own consciousness. And that is a big shift in what we're doing because that would mean that our objective, you know, seeming seeing that matter is not absolute as we think, the growth would be the evolution of consciousness. And that would mean a inner change. An inner change that would shift from just accumulating wealth and material possessions or devoting too much time to the body to cultivating a, a right intent and right values. And we have seen this. Many, many, many people have talked about this about the years, you know. I have one right here, Marcus Aurelius. Don't let's not go far. The Stoics they say that 
What is a good life? A good life is something we can practice right now, wherever we are, whoever we are, in whatever we do. And that is the right intent, the, the, the condition to love, the intent to love, the intent to help others, the intent to be fortunate or, or be thankful for what we have and cultivate those values in order to, to inspire others but grow ourselves too. Because we all have, as obviously localized selves, that is the power of the individual. Because even though we are part of a, a whole, this illusion or dream that has been created or simulation, whatever you want to call it, has been created in order to test or iterate the life force throughout different avatars, you could say, which makes us you and I. You have different strengths than I do, and we have different uh, values, and all of these, uh, this am amalgam of conditions can create a different outcome or expression. These circumstances allow energy to be transmuted into something completely different. So that's why it's so important for every single one of us to, you know, we could think, oh, I'm not the president, or I'm not a celebrity, or I'm not in this position of power, or whatever, but it's not about that. That's just a byproduct of, 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 of material circumstances which are not absolute. They are only a small part of, of, of the reality that we inhabit. The important thing is to, to evolve our consciousness, to, to cultivate inner growth, and to experience life and research by ourselves what, what we think is the good life. What are the essentials to us? And seemingly here for me, I, I think that cultivating love and, and relationships and meaningful work too. Tom, Tom says that, you know, we can find meaning in all kinds of work, but I, I tend to disagree with that. I mean, yes, you can, but there are certain inclinations to your temperament or my temperament that would uh, allow us to channel more energy into certain kinds of activities. So it does matter. Every, every action that we perform, or rather, the intent with what we perform, every single action matters. Because as we know, again, Stoics or, or Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, oh my God, I always mess that up, or the Gita, they always talk about how we should only perform the work and let go of the boon or the rewards of action. We should focus on what is under our control and let go of the rest and be present. How do we do that? Meditation. When we meditate, we, we start to recognize that, that our true self is not either the body, it can change, it has changed, you have aged, I have aged, yet something remains consistent and gives me a sense of, oh, I am, but it's not the body because it changed. Is it the thoughts? No, they have changed. Is it the emotions? No, they come and go. So what is it? Neti, neti, perhaps it's just that state where everything else is or by the light which everything is being recognized. The Atman. Yeah, that's just it. <laughs> so with that, we can also become more compassionate, I think. We know that every single one of us is just walking alongside each other and following our own path. There is no formula. I think we can become more generous kinder and, and more empathetic and willing to help others. And what a better way to live than that. Of course we're going to fall down. Of course we may have anger fits, but I think that can diminish and we can devote our lives to a inner, an inner growth that exponentially Grows, you know, because I think the more we devote ourselves to understanding, not just accumulating facts, to understanding and experiencing and researching our own experiences and not.
buying into other people's beliefs or dogma, which has happened to me, we, we start to create our own theory of everything, which is basically discovering truth, but naming it in different ways. You know, we have seen that many, many cultures, many books, many religions aim at that and, and name truth, and we are discovering it. So that's what it is. And the gateway, what are some actions, what are some implications of this? Well, material is not absolute. There is something more. Therefore, it is important because we are in this dream and we navigate there. But if we know that it is not absolute, we open our mind to new theories, to new ways of experimenting, to new ways of seeing the world and valuing non-materials, which we intuitively do. Love, gratitude, compassion, empathy, none of those, we can't, we can't touch it. We experience it. So I don't know, and beauty. Just to dedicate our lives to the pursuit of beauty, truth, and good action, or good intent, let's say. And we're discovering that and sharing that with others. And we cultivate that through the practice of meditation. Of course, we have to, we don't have to, but it's useful if you cultivate the body, if you, because it's, it's an instrument in the end of the way, you know, to, to navigate the lowest level of, of this unbounded oneness, let's say. But anyways, that, that just leads us to see that we have so many limiting beliefs there that we, if we are willing to take responsibility for it, each one of those matters. And no one can do it but ourselves. We are on this path, a unique path that has to be discovered by us and tested by us. And we have to trust not only the intellectual mind, but the inner, the inner compass, the wisdom of the heart. And that's day by day, but it's fun. We can be playful about it and keep growing and keep nourishing that and forging relationships with others to know what the hell we're up to and facing fears and doubts because they are just an illusion of the ego and go about our own way without any apologies. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's it. And I'm still researching that, you know, I, I want to test what he, what Tom calls the NPMR guides or, you know, I set the intent to get guidance from, from, from the universe. And this, this is powerful, I think. Asking for questions before going to bed, journaling, and, and, and then listening, paying attention, opening the eyes, or, you know, the third eye, some people would say. I want to get more into Rudolf Steiner. He talked about knowledge of the higher worlds and Stutz, Phil Stutz, a psychologist, does too. So I'm on that quest right now. I'm figuring out what the hell all of this means. How does it apply to me? But at least it has made me doubt all that I think I know. You know, I, I know that I know nothing, but that's great. Like Newton said, he was just like a kid collecting shells while his back is to the big and vast ocean, something like that. Well, I think that's good, you know, to be open-minded and know that we could learn so much more, so much more. And everything that we see is, is just more, you know, than just hard knock material. <laughs> so if this, if this serves for something, it's just that, you know, to, make you question everything that you know and, and, and perhaps commit to evolving your consciousness, your inner growth every day and, and question whether matter is absolute or not. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to talk about this, there is my email and my Instagram. Love to chat. Have a good one.